We got muted. There we go. Hey, those of you guys that are new to Twin Tuesday, as always, here's what the plan for Twin Tuesday is. Number one, Ian, what's the major, the number one rule of Twin Tuesday? Number one, dude, it's up to you to take a couple of things out of this so that you can execute and go win at a higher level. Number two, it's your responsibility, people. Number two, you better have a good attitude and you better be smiling the whole time. Smile, damn it. Linden, smile, because you look like a serial killer if you don't. Some of you guys, then you look like a model, dude. Holy crap, dude. See, see Damien, look, look at good. Fabian. He's on the construction lot or something. I don't know what he's doing, dude, but he's like, he's like, He's, yo, he's smiling under that rag. That's my boy. Now, listen, we've been doing these for two years. Our goal is to change your life. If you're really consciously paying attention over the next 30 to 45 minutes, we've got some heat for you. Today's Twin Tuesday. We've been doing these for two years. We got some of the highest individual earners in solar, in insurance, in cars, in any kind of sales. It doesn't Business matter. owners, everybody. Sales, entrepreneurship, it all comes down to what we're going to talk about today, and that's ultimately being the best closer. Yep. You could talk about work ethic. You could talk about mindset. At the end of a presentation, Ian, if you can't get somebody to say yes, it doesn't matter. So, guys, everybody write this down. Closing is the number one tool that you're going to have to be good at, or if you are bad at, you will quit doing what you are currently doing. And what does that mean? A lot of people get discouraged. And why do they get discouraged? Because, because they, they get closing. to closing, they and closing then they shit. can't close. And then they're like, ah, oh, I'm going to another industry. Listen, you would never leave the industry that you're in, and you'd be in there forever if you're a really good closer. So today is all about breaking down a close showing you in any industry how you can maximize it, how you can start to double and triple that income. And by the way, for my leaders out there, your ability to get other people to become the closers that you are is gonna be the skill that you need. Sales and leadership, sales and leadership. But if you can't close, and if you can't make other people close, and by the way, if you can't close people to go do what they want, like your sales team, or like your family, or like I'm gonna close Ian on getting a new toothbrush after we leave this call, then you can't do nothing, Nick Ross. How do you gotta in front of our friends. I'm going to close you on being a nicer damn human. These are my friends. Bianca is my friend. She ain't your friend. I guarantee she likes me more than she likes you. BS, dude. I saw her at church the other day. I'll give her the biggest hug. Did you give her a hug? I'll go down okay. and give her a hug right now. Okay, well, that's the name I'm of the I'm giving her a virtual hug. What about that? Well, that leads to our first, uh -huh. very first tip of being a good closer. And the very first tip, write this down. Number one is reciprocity, my man. Yep. Reciprocity. Yep. Ian, give them an example on reciprocity. Well, listen, guys, listen. There, there's a study. Anybody watch Bar Rescue? Raise your hand if you watch Bar Rescue, if you've ever seen it. I got like five of you guys. You guys don't know what Bar Rescue is? You guys are freaking crazy. All right, it was always my dream to open up like a dealer rescue or something and go to a business that's failing and show them how to not fail. They go into bars and show them like why they're losing all their money and all this stuff. But anyway, listen to this stat. Listen to the stat. Mute Gary. Mute Gary's over here selling something. Okay. But listen to this stat. Listen, John Taffer said this and it freaking, it just made a ton of sense to me. Listen, uh, a waitress, when she's going to give a bill, he teaches them to do this every time to increase their tips. Yep. If you want to make more money, well, dude, you're going to have to affect people's mood, their attitude. You're going to have to make them feel like they're in the right place. And in order to do that, watch this little stat. He said, it doesn't matter what you give them as long as you give them something first, as long as you give them something first, you're never doing it to just like, you know, get something in return. That's not what reciprocity is. You're giving first to get something. But he said, I coach my, my waiters that before they give the bill, they walk out and they'll give like the customer a mint. Like if I had a mint today for Evan, I'd give his ass mint because he's burning a hole in my neck. Okay, but check this out. When he when they would give them one mint, like that was that would make their their tips three percent more likely to go up. Three percent, not bad. You're getting three percent more money. When they gave them two mints, they were 14% more likely. Dude, that's almost quadrupled the amount, like 14% more likely to make money. But this next little tip, he said, when they're walking away from a table, what I tell them to do is turn back around and say, hey, guys, you guys have been so phenomenal. I actually want to give you another mint. I want to give you a couple more things because you guys have been the best customers that I've had today. So I truly thank you. I appreciate you. And I'm giving you something. When I give them something, they feel like they're owed something. That would make their tips go through the roof, and they would get 26% more tips every time. Evan and I have taught reciprocity for years to some of you, and some of you still don't do the reciprocity of the value in advance that we talked about so much. So, Evan, you go through a couple of examples other than that. My, that we can talk about reciprocity. My absolute way. favorite thing to do in sales is reciprocity because it makes me feel good, and I like to shock people with being a pro. Most people aren't pros in the world. You can't go anywhere and get a pro experience. Just imagine if you and your family were to show up to a car lot and you jump out of a car. Immediately, you're jumped on by a sales guy who probably doesn't have a great 
great attitude. So reciprocity for me is showing up with a good attitude, like actually giving away some good energy. Ooh, that's reciprocity. To try to get it. But what I would do is I would offer the client after I meet him, I say, hey, well, hey, my name's Evan. Welcome to Titan's Nissan. Look, are, are you here for part sales or service? You're here for sales? Man, awesome. You're here for our big sales event? Dude, no way. You haven't heard about it? It's amazing. Hey, before we do anything, I just want to thank you guys for coming in. I know that there's one thing that's non-refundable, and that's time. So the fact that you're going to spend it with me, I got something for your kids. I got a little toy chest inside. And I want to give them a couple of cars to play with before we start. Also, for you, I insist that I get you some water or coffee because I know it's hot out here. Let me get you something to drink, something cold. You want a Gatorade, a pop? Ian, tell me no. Nope, I look, don't want anything. Look, I'm look, good. Look, hey, wait, wait, wait. I'm look, good. Listen, I'm good. Look, I just look, want to look at that Toyota Corolla. I, I, I don't know if you know this, but at my house, my wife insists that I take care of people. I feed them. We clothe them. Do, I, do We do everything for them. So I'm, I make it my priority to make sure you get something before we even start this journey. I'm getting, I insist on getting you some water. And if you don't let me get you water, I'm going to get you an empty cup. I don't care. I'm getting you something. Guys, all right, slow down. Let's think about what just happened there. Do you feel like when that customer, if you did that to every customer, do you feel like your sales would go through the roof? Do you feel like your objections would come down? Um, like that would just naturally happen. I watched some of our guys, like Chris Steinbrook, he's on this call. You know, he performs at a level that most just could never imagine. It's unreal. But, but I watch him invest in his customers. He was sending dollars. dealership owners. Like he's like, oh, I saw your wife. You guys were working out. She's he's in Lululemon. Lululemon. He sent him Lululemon. And he's like never asking for anything. But it's funny when you're never you're never asking for something that What's those people person? usually get the most. So in your sales process, in your sales game, are you just withdrawing from the customer like give me, give me, give me? Or are you the guy that's depositing and never asking for stuff back and then you just automatically oh, start getting stuff back? You know, I love this subject because I was talking to Cecilia Lopez the last time we talked about reciprocity on a call. Yeah. And she's a door-to-door -door salesperson. She started showing up to her appointments with coffee for her customers, with different things for her customers, little gift bags for her clients. And, and what did it do to her, her sales? Well, number one, it just made her feel good because people looked at her like, I've never I've had, never had do people this. don't give a shit anymore. Well, guys, do people really give a shit anymore? No, nope. it's rare. It's only you guys. And then it's like us versus the world. All of us versus the world. They don't care. So, you know, that raised the closing percentage. It raised the relationship. If you want to stop having objections, how about you start doing stuff that's going to kill the objections, which is raise the relationship. Write that down. Yeah. Raise the relationship. And you know what? My, my, my buddy, raise the muscle, the my buddy, the muscle, um, you know, some of you guys know him. He's really popular online. If not, go follow at the muscle. You'll see just this really amazing guy. But, you know, he said, man, I built my entire business off of being relational, not transactional. Like he's just super relational. Like, like he shows up for you. He wants to give to you. And then in turn, you just feel like you owe some shit. Like you, you're like, man, dude, like, well, however I can help because you're always showing up. I was you were, that person. I wish you would have more reciprocity towards me. Cause I was the twin brother that I gave you deals your whole life. Deals. I gave you deals. Your I, whole life. He, he skated me. If you're not in the car business, skate is when it's your customer and another salesman takes them and sells them. That's what he would do. Because I was prospecting all the time. You know, what I, you know why I did that, Evan? You know why I did that? You want to talk Bullshit. about it? This is why I did that. Because you were lazy, and if you felt full, then you would never go hunt. And I was trying to teach oh. you the art of hunting. Oh, so what I, you, what I wanted from Andy Elliott on that one. What I wanted you to do, I did that for, for you, not wow. for me. Not I didn't do that for my paycheck. I don't demand that. And that was some talented BS. Yeah, I know my paychecks went up. John, I know they went up, but like, like I was really doing it. All right. Rest for him. Get out of here. Okay, number two. If you want to be one of the baddest ass sales pros in the world and persuasion and influence is the key, dude, you got to learn to create some scarcity in your yeah. program and what you're selling in yourself. You know, so many people, they're willing to just give, give, give. They're, they're, they're not willing to like create and frame the urgency or the scarcity that they have to have. Yep, yep. It's so right? true, man. If people can always feel like they can get to you or do something or it's easy to get in your thing. Yep. they're never going to do business. Yeah, so dude, it just you, you people want more of what they don't what there's less of. Right. They want more of what there's less of. My brain was struggling with that one, but they want more of what there's less of. So like you guys remember when all this shit happened with the cars and all of it went down like this? What happened? The prices rose like this. I'm going to tell you guys a story. British Airways like a year ago, almost today, they said, hey, we're going to shut down all these flights to London. We're going to shut down all these flights to London from New York to London. We're shutting them down. Like we are shutting this flight down. You know what they did? They ended up selling all of the flights, say 200x the profit on a flight that wasn't profitable. And they sold that flight out for an entire year. Guys, did the fuel change? Did anything change? Nope. Did anything People change? Did the driver change? Couldn't have. Did, did the plane airline change? It did nothing change. Do you know what it changed? 
is they stop letting everybody get access. I remember I used to chase every client. I'm like, man, I want to do business with everybody, everybody. What I realized is there's a lot of motherfuckers out there, excuse my language, that like I don't want to do business with that wore me the hell out. And I'm not saying turn down clients because some of you guys are in jobs where you can't necessarily do that. But sometimes in a service job, like I'm showing up for some people that aren't showing up. I show up for customers that show up for me. I show up for customers that are on time. I show up for customers that have a good attitude. I show up extra for people that are doing some of those things. So you got to think about your business. You got to think about like the scarcity hey, of, your, hey, of your company. There's only one you. Hey, think about your life for a second. Think about your life for a second. Like create a little scarcity. Ian used to chase all the damn girls. Yep. And so they would all run away from him. What you chase. No, I would catch a lot. What of you chase runs from you. Yeah. So you want to start to attract. Well, so you want to be a little scarce. All right, so guys. Ian guys. stopped doing that and he raised the standards. Now he's got a, like a super hot wife. Yes. Well, because guys, I want you to think things. about this right now, guys. That's because he my became scarce. Up. He became scarce. My men and my women on here and my transformers, whatever we are nowadays. Everybody. Do you want to be with the person that's been with everybody? Raise your hand if you want to be with No. Well, when I was 20, I definitely did. I didn't care. Okay. You know, so some of you are like, yeah, that's me, dude. Some of you are like, yeah, I've been with him. Okay. <laughs> no, don't say that, dude. Come on. Let's see. Let's get serious here. Uh, uh, Jason's going to piss his pants up there. All right. Listen. All right. You don't. You want, you want to be with somebody who has value to themselves and knows who they are. Do you know who you are? Do you know what value you bring to your dealership? Do you know what value you bring to that door when you're knocking on that door? Do you know what value you bring to your coaching program? Do you know what value that you bring to your mom and pop shop that most people can't get a hold of a mom and pop shop? Oh, like they can't get a hold of a corporation. They got you. They can trust in you. Are you that person? Do you even know that you're that person? Do you even believe that you're that person? Listen, in order to close, closing the most valuable tool, some of you don't believe. You'll start to believe more the more you close. In order to get more belief, you're going to have to get more closing. It doesn't come like the belief first and then the closing. You start to close more and you start to get some more belief in yourself. And then once you do, you have to have a little bit of scarcity. Yeah. And listen, scarcity wise, if I was selling cars, if I was selling something like I, it, scarcity is easy. Let's just talk about cars for a second. You know, you get somebody that's on a, on a vehicle and you only have a few of them. Instead of just saying, I have only, I only got a few. I, you, There's only two. It or leave it. Take it or leave Say, it. Mr. Customer, can I explain something to you? You called in on the best car. And look, if I had 10 of these cars in a day, I would sell a, I would sell 10 of them. You can't if do I that. 11, I'd sell 11 of them. Dude, listen, if I were to put, and this is a used 2018 F-150, if I were to put freaking duct tape on the odometer, can I explain something new? People wouldn't even know if it was new or used. This thing is amazing. But I only got one of them. I got three people that called in on it today. But you sound like the nicest customer that I've met. Reciprocity. I'm if giving you them bring some... me some dinner, I'll give it to you listen, first. Listen, yeah, if you're new, listen, I want to make I'll this buy you dinner. for you. And that's creating a little bit of urgency and not creating that scarcity like a dick, like, oh, I've only got one. You better make it down here or you ain't getting it. Yeah. Like, tell a little bit of a story. Be a freaking human, man. Yeah. Or when they're leaving, are you like, are you like, oh, there's only one, take it or leave it. Or if they left, could you make a video and you're like this, listen, that customer left. I know you're supposed to close them, but let's imagine that customer left. Could you shoot him a video and say, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Customer, I know those people are back there looking at that car. I know you're going to take a look at a couple others. Listen, we love you guys. Number one, not about selling you guys. You guys just doing business with us made us feel really good today. Just knowing that we have the opportunity to earn your business was really good. You know, I'll let you know if they don't purchase it, they're working on a couple of things, but I'll get back with you. I truly thank you and I truly appreciate you. Could you could you put some scarcity? Could you, could you put some reciprocity in what when if, they leave? What if the grid was getting close to max out? I hear solar guys tell me your customers the grid maxing out. They don't even know what that means. Yeah, stop speaking nerd. Stop speaking nerd. They don't know what they that don't know means. what an ACV is. They're like, I ACV'd the car at this Some field. Of like, what's that mean? Some of you guys speak in your the, like the lingo of your business, and people don't understand the lingo of your business. Dumb it down, man. I, I would say it's where Evan can understand it. So you gotta talk so, really stupid like a two-year-old. Talk listen, like a two-year-old and say there's listen. this thing out there and it's called the grid. Let me explain what it is. The companies, the government, they own the power, all the power in your neighborhood. They typically own that shit. They don't want people off. And they don't want people off of it because it would mean less money. Does that make sense, Evan? Yeah. Not sure if it does. Yes, it does. Okay, cool. So listen, what the they're doing now that everybody's going away from the grid they're getting they're ready to cut it out and make a law around it and soon as they do you're not going to be able to get it even if you paid a billion dollars so what it would make the most sense is if today we did something so that tomorrow you wouldn't be upset that you didn't have it does that make sense mr customer does that create a or, does, or does 
the grid's gonna the be maxed out. Maxed out. And if you don't do it now, if you don't do it, Johnny's gonna do it next oh, time. Oh, bro, stop, stop, that stop crap. the amateur language before I punch you in the face. I'm gonna kick your you neck. Got, off who your wants a knuckle sandwich? Just ask for one. Gina, Gina Plum, boy, I'm sending her to give you guys knuckle sandwich. I'm, I'm not, not gonna knuckle sandwich her, but I'm gonna send her out to knuckle. I'm sandwich. not gonna knuckle no. sandwich Mike Zapata. You have like a UFC fight. I would knuckle sandwich Chris Taylor and Matt Branch. Oh, I already did knuckle sandwich. Yeah, dude, they didn't fight back. Yeah, they weren't even fighting. See, Matt's now Matt's smiling, dude, because now he's turning. And red and shit. See, he looks so much better when hey, he's smiling. Hey, dude. I had to get him to smile because well, he's just a little reciprocity you know, come tip on, that man. you guys could use. If you get good rapport with your customers, if you get really good rapport with them, we make fun and poke fun at a lot of our the people. It's good reciprocity people. because they a lot of the people who we know that we've developed a really good relationship with, like Mike Audio, he's one of our sales managers from a long time ago. Like we can poke fun at him because we have that relationship. Because we have that relationship. Yeah, some of you treat the relationship so like. Like, you know, like Chris Taylor's on here. I abuse him for a living. Abuse. He actually pays for it. He, he actually extra. loves it. He he pays extra money every month. I get a check in the mail and I don't even, and I it like says, more money from Chris. That's and then I call him and I say, dude, you're a piece of shit. Come on, stop being so slow. God, dude, you got to get better looking, dude. Gosh, you're a six, but you should be a seven, dude. We got to get you to a seven. You're ugly. Okay, just, we're, all, we're so far right? off topic. But see how excited he's getting? We're so far off topic. See that? Back get another check in the mail, aren't I, Chris? Hey, okay, listen. It up, guys. Number three. What? Hey, by the way, real quick though, I gotta say one thing. All right, hold on, Chris. Chris, when we first got to know him, he was selling like 30, 40 cars. Him and his buddy went out on their own. They had a trailer. They literally just grinded their ass off for some years. They decided to get a sales team. Their sales team, you know, did about forty to fifty cars a month. Then they got with us. They've been growing. Chris is the most relentless son of a biatch on the planet. Like, this dude is truly crazy. Some of y'all think y'all are crazy. He is crazy. So, you know, our goal was to break 100 cars last year. Well, we broke 100 cars last year. His goal now, as a complete psychopath, too, nobody's selling 200 cars in his area of Buffalo, New York, used cars. His goal is to break 200 cars and buy two more stores. You know what he's doing right now? Buying more stores. And this month, we're very close to breaking 200 cars. Going from selling 32 years ago to 200, most places could never do that, ever in the history of their lifetimes. So he's got a legendary commitment, and he always shows up for us. If I call him, he's the first owner to call me back. Some of y'all are so damn busy as general managers, I can see why your company's going broke, because nobody can ever get a hold of you. I call him, he answers. I say, hey, send 10 people to the seminar. He's at the seminar. How many seminars have you come to, Chris? Many. Hey, you even told me one time you said, hey, I have a fear of getting on stage. Put me on stage for as long as possible. Three times you did that. One time you almost shut your pants. He was like, oh. and you were like, ah, oh, no. And yeah. then you did it. And then he did it. And, and he loves that. That's about growing. That's, that's how you do big legendary shit. Well, okay. Well, side note, that's called chasing a little bit of suffering. Like if you wanted to really suck the sour to get to the sweet, suck the sour, get to the sweet. You're going to have to forcefully put yourself in some suffering positions. Ian and I hated running. So now we sign up for a Spartan race every four to six months, because every time we do it, we learn something that we eliminate a low limiting belief that we can't do it. But how many of y'all won't write down one thing right now that you could chase some suffering that you know you don't want to do? What is it? But if you did it and you put yourself through some suffering, what is it? Your little whiny ass would be better. Is it Skittles? Do you have a Skittles problem? I had that. Oh, that's me and you. Oh, shit. You know, uh, we got Skittles, right? We can't I, look at I Skittles. Give them up. No, I ain't giving them Skittles up. I'll give. I'll, I'll do whatever you want, but I ain't giving Skittles up. We I gave them that. Skittles up. All right. Back to number Skittles three. free for the last two years. Back to number three. What kind of authority do you put on? Do you look like the expert? Do you talk like the expert? Do you know how to come across like the expert without sounding like a dick? A dick or like too cocky? Yeah. But you gotta learn to provide some authority, dude. It and I'm gonna go. You go on an authority real quick, and then I want to say something again about reciprocity. Now that I saw somebody on this call. Well, I'll just give an example of a real estate group that trains with us. We have a real estate group, and they said, dude, every time I get an appointment set from the receptionist, it's like not a good appointment, and we're at, we're closing at like a 22% rate on that appointment. I called in, and what I heard was she was like, yeah, let me grab one of the real estate agents for you. Let me grab one of the real estate agents for you. And I'm like, well, I don't want just one of them. Like, I want the best one. So what they did was. Now, when she answers the phone, she goes, hey, I'm going to get you over to Sandra. Sandra's been doing this for 21 years. She's, she's the best at what she does. She's topping our group. And she is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. She is the best of the best. Well, now what's the perception when you get on the phone with the authority? 
Dude, you're not objecting. You're like, oh, here's my problem. Let me fix it. Like, so some of you, do you sound like the authority? Some of you in your companies, are you putting off that you're the authority? You're putting off that you're the expert. When you're on social media, do you just look like the average kid getting on there talking about car sales? Are you talking about something relevant to the market? Are you talking about actual problems that are happening that you can fix? Can you actually fix problems? If you can, you need to learn to articulate your value. My coach is out there. We had a physical therapist that was struggling to close. We said, dude, what, what certifications do you got? Yep. Like, where do, what do you do? Like, where'd you learn all this stuff? He was going on a rant and rave about NYU and this and this. And I said, but why is none of this in your office? Dude, I walk in your office. It looks like a serial killer's office. It looks scary. I don't want to take I don't my pants off. I don't want to get touched in the hair. Like, I don't want to stretch. Sorry, it. but it's a little scary in there. I just don't want to do it, Michelle. Am I right? Michelle knows I'm saying. She's like, I ain't going in there either. Yeah. So it's like being in Chris's office. Yeah. Like, it's weird, bro. Chris, you need more said, pictures in there. Or said, like, why don't actually, you put some about. pictures, number one, of your family? Why don't you put some pictures so people know that you're a normal human being? And also, why don't you put some pictures of your degrees and some of your accolades so people know that they like you? Guys, how many restaurants will they, that you go into say that they were restaurant of the week or the, the best restaurant in the city? That makes you want to do business with them. Yeah, how many people want to go into Chris Taylor's store because they know that they're crushing it? They know they that see the you. banners. They see the banners. They, they see the number in. one plaque. Hey, and if you're in Buffalo, I'll challenge you. I'll pay you $100,000 if you walk into his store today and you don't feel the most ultimate winning vibe and if you truly can walk in with the camera and show me that they're fucking sitting around chilling and just doing nothing i'll give you 100 grand i swear to god because you'll walk in there and you know what you're gonna feel you're gonna feel the authority you're gonna feel the experts you're gonna feel the vibe you're Damn. gonna feel a winning energy Dude, i'm getting the chills you're, you're gonna see it meet some bro. you're gonna see it so if you're in buffalo or you're close just walk in there with the camera so i can see what you see and i guarantee you'll see a winning vibe. can i if not, I'll invoice Chris for half and I'm cool to pay half. Can I, can, can I tell you one thing too real quick on reciprocity? There's a guy named Sam on this call. Sam texts me after one of the calls and Sam put together all of these notes on all of our calls and he started to send them to me. And he hasn't asked for anything. I don't know what the play is, but Sam just said, hey, I love what you guys do. I love the energy you provide. I love all these stuff. I put together these special notes. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start posting those in the Car Sales Nation and on some of our groups, or if you need some of Sam's notes, because he takes really good notes. You know, you but know, Sam, but Sam just, it, he, it made me want to coach Sam more. I'm like, dude, this, I can't believe well, you just did that, the, man. How nice of you. The authority's always coachable. They're always learning and they're so always thank out. you, Sam. They're always out thinking people. And that, that, the authority creative. is usually the highest frequency thinker in the room. And they, these suckers are creative, man. They, they are creative. So that's good. All right. Number four. Number four is consistency, man. Consistency of your energy, you're, consistency of the calls that you make, consistency of your leadership. Closers, the people that are the ultimate closers on you. I want you to think mentally of the best closer that you've ever seen in your industry, in your business. That'd be me. And yeah, that are you was, thinking of me right now? You're think, some of you guys. Are, yeah, you're thinking of me, Evan. Uh, put put it, put in the chat which what which twin you think's a better closer, Ian or Evan? Yeah, and just you guys know I was born first. Mike Audio, you know, you, you know, seen us you, live. Yeah, uh, you know I was born Taylor, first. You've seen us live. You know I was born first, so I you know I've kicked his ass for a lot of years. You okay. Know? You know, he was born greatest. first. That was the only thing that he freaking won at, by the way. Let's see what the chat's saying. So let's see what the chat. Let's and if the chat says your name and it says Evans, just understand Ivan. your membership. Oh, that's good, Tony. Right? Your, your membership's getting revoked. Oh, you guys are playing like our mom right now. You guys don't want oh, to judge. You don't want to judge. You don't want to judge. You know me. it's Ian. Jonathan Marte. That's my boy. Okay. You just got some free credit. Okay. Listen. Out of Evans, Evans deal. I'm sending you over. The list list with lads. I don't know what that is. List no, that's what I'm talking about. Lads, I'm, you're, I don't know why your thing isn't working anymore. I don't know why your credit card just got ran for a new car down at, in Pinsky Auto don't down there. Do I don't it. know why. Don't you do it. I don't know why you just put five grand down for me for a new car. Listen, I don't up. know why I just bought solar with your account. Listen up, guys. Who sells solar? I'll buy it with lads. Listen up. The, the One of the most critical keys that you're going to learn in your life, which a lot of people don't understand this, is your ability to be consistent. You have to start, st you have to stop starting and stopping stuff, starting yep. and stopping, starting and stopping. It's the biggest key to winning. Chris Steinbrook, some of the top salespeople in the world, some of the top people on this call understand that your ability to do, do the little stuff master, every day, master the mundane, your ability to do the stuff that keeps you in momentum, that keeps you in progress, that keeps you mentally sharp, that keeps you growing, that keeps you going. Those people that get that understand closing at, a, at another level because they're constantly growing every day and people can see a consistent person when they walk in the room, they know it. Yeah. And you can, you can feel that guys. Do you feel when you walk into somewhere and you can see who's the consistent person, you know, it. you can see like, just you, you, do you guys feel like all of these things all go together? 
Do you guys feel that some of you put a fire be... in the emoji uh, emoji in the chat if you feel like this is some good value? Do you guys feel you? like they all go together? Like one without the other, like you're kind of lacking. You know what I mean? So like you have to think like, do I got the reciprocity for my customers? Do I got the consistency? Do I got the authority? Am I lacking in that one? Okay, here's what a winner does. A winner looks at themselves and they don't need other people to look at us. Our job is to inspire you to look at a hole and then for you to go plug that hole. Like, listen, I, I was talking to our sales team this morning and we have a girl named Selena. Selena's the most, she's on fire all the time. She's always going crazy. She's the most consistent person ever in everything that she does pretty much. And I said, Selena, she has the most reciprocity in our company. She's mailed out thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of gifts and to many of you on here. And, and I said, damn, you know what? I'm like a six or a seven there. I've got to, I've got to change that. So yep. you know what a pro does? They look in the mirror and they change it. Andy always says this, and I love this phrase, probably the number one thing that I would say that he says, the person that can self-correct is worth the most money yep. and they're forever wealthy. And so right now, if you're thinking, man, hey, I'm lacking in that area. Here's the cool thing. Fix it and your, your life and money goes like that. Okay, this one's going to be hard for a few of you guys, especially mm -hmm. my man, Jay Mendoza. He's been around me for so long. But what's your likability, man? Yeah. Like, dude, why are you saying like... Jay's not likable? No, I'm just I'm saying Jay is the most likable. Jay's got a likable face. Jay, yeah. Jay has a punchable, likable face. I mean, I don't think it's punchable. Jay, Jason Klein has a likable face. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Marcus's face is more punchable yeah. than Jay's. What are you? What's your likability? I'm just kidding, Marcus. Maybe you look like you got... Looks like his little sweet face, man. You know, uh, look, nothing looks sweet about that guy. Dude. His smile. Look, he's got a sweet smile, dude. I swear, like an Armenian killer. It's the smile, but I had to shave my head off. I used to have a flat of hair. <laughs> he's, got a nice, he's got a nice personality, hey, dude. Hey, hey, I want to ask you guys a real question. Those of you that have been tuning in and have met us in person, what do we? What do we? Are we like this in person? Are we likable? If you're having fun on this call, do we seem likable? Do we seem like people you'd want to be around? And we're doing this through Zoom call. We're, we're influencing and persuading through Zoom to hundreds of you guys. Can you do this in person where you start to become that person that you know is inside of you? You start to do things that are different than other people that's likable. But but, but otherwise, you could go the other way. And yeah. Doing the or same thing. like if Jalen's sitting next to me and he's selling next to me on my same floor and then Jalen's a dick. And so I'm like, I just use dick habits. Jalen, I'm not using you, bro. Like, you're excellent, bro. Okay. But like, you're right there, bro. And I, you know what I'm saying? But like, let's imagine that Jalen's like a total dick. And then I'm like, I just naturally start just emulating some things that he's doing. Listen, if you're hearing anything, listen, the world around you is going to be surrounded by a lot of these habits they don't have. Right. If you want to be truly the one percenter that you want to be, dude, you can't conform to like even what maybe some of your managers do or what you like, what you see in the world. You're going to have to know that like, dude, some of these characteristics you're going to have to work on and not lose the edge for anybody. And if you lose that edge, you'll end up going backwards and hating yourself. Or by the way, I'm going to give you a tip on how we learn to become a little bit more likable because Ian and I truly weren't really great at networking. We really didn't like, like we really... We know how to turn on our energy, but a lot of the times too, we just kind of like to be by ourselves and stuff, you know, just like anybody, uh, everybody always asks us, are you guys always extroverted? Really? No. When you see us out of work, we're usually kind of quiet guys. Like we're kind of just like to do our thing. But anytime we get around people, it's become a skill. When we walk into the gym, it's like we immediately try to find one person and this has become just, it's natural for us. Yep. Everywhere we go, we try to walk up to somebody we don't know and try to make their day. And if we can do that a couple of times a day, then when it comes to meeting a prospect, cold on a door, cold on a number, cold at a networking event, it's usually pretty easy to learn how to influence and persuade them because we've taught, we've done this thing so many times that it's, it's not scary. See, some of you guys are scared and that's why you're not likable because you're thinking that all of these things in your head about why people won't like you when people don't give a fuck about you. I'm just telling you, like they don't. Care. It's, it's thinking, usually it's they're usually, not thinking about you. It's so you usually, to, the, it, the ego, it. the ego inside, inside of you says, oh, man, what if this person doesn't like? Oh, what if, dude, see, the number one, probably the number one thing that you have to get rid of is like, hey, dude, don't worry if they don't like you. If don't they don't like them. you, they're not with you. And yeah. by the way, if you're being like just authentically you and they don't like you, it's okay, man. It's great. There's a lot of people that are going to like you. But if you're being 100% yourself and you're believing in yourself and you're closing more deals and you're using a lot of these techniques, man, you're just going to start to have a new presence about yourself. You're going to have to have it. You're going to start having a new thought pattern about yourself. You're going to start getting rid of like some of those old insecurities or old confidence issues or old like little chains and mental barriers. You're going to start getting rid of some of those things. The more you believe in you man i remember when me ian and andy used to sit down and we would after andy's calls we would sit andy down and we would all talk about the things we didn't like and the things we liked and we were always trying to get better and we were just hungry for success 
Well, one of the things we were doing is we would sit down and all of us would talk like, hey, maybe we shouldn't talk about fitness. Hey, maybe we shouldn't talk about this. Yeah. Hey, maybe we shouldn't talk about this. People aren't going to like that. There's going to be people that tune yeah. us out. Some people aren't going to like and that. And we were trying to make our message for a few years early on just kind of like a blanket message that every single person we thought would like. But we got a lot less results. We ended up not liking our coaching. Then people would get into our coaching program, and then they ultimately wouldn't like the people that we were. So we had to start being honest with who we were and spreading the message that we want to get out to the world. And when we did that, our revenue, three, four, five X every yep. month. Yep. And now if you go to Andy's comments on Instagram, LinkedIn, anything, you're going to see so many people in there that don't like what Andy says, right? But does Andy care? No, man. He doesn't lose he doesn't, sleep over it. He doesn't even Stop. care. He thinks it's funny that people can sit around and talk about somebody that's playing the game while they're in the stands. It's the most hilarious thing in the world, to be honest. And they typically don't like themselves. So here's a tip for Ian. He's going to tell you on actually being able to be more likable. Okay, so what causes people to like another? I want you to write that down. What causes people to like somebody else? Yep. And then I'm going to give you three things. Number one, they're similar. So they're like, oh man, we're similar. Like I can tell that you believe what you do and I can tell that we have similar interests. So like if you have some common ground with the prospect, like they show up to the car lot and I can see they're a Bronco fan. And before I start talking about things that don't matter, I can say, oh man, dude, you're a Broncos fan. Like that's really similar to me. I'm a Broncos well, fan. Some would argue you that know? the Broncos haven't mattered in a while. Yeah. And I would be like, all right, whatever, dude, we suck and it's okay, dude. Or maybe we'll figure this out. Your team probably ain't won shit in a long time. Anyways, if you're a Cowboys fan or something, yeah. so it's no big we know that. We know that. You know, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of losing. There's like ten up. teams out there that haven't won anything, including the Buffalo Bills. Chris Taylor, just so you know. Oh wait, he. I think he. I think he likes like New England or something. But like, they ain't won either. So I'm just, I'm just saying. Super Bowl. I'm just 50. saying. Okay. So, but like compliments. So, are you similar? Are you similar? Do you have the ability to relate to them, or are you just always thinking about like? The, the smart rebuttal, shit to the say, rebuttal. what they're going to say, but your sale has no likability. No rhythm to, like their, to their relationship. No rhythm. The rhythm to the okay. relationship. So similar like that. Write down the compliments. Everybody wants to be complimented. Everybody wants to be complimented. You know, when they come in and they're your prospect and, you know, you get them over the phone, let's say it's a phone sale. Are you like, gosh, man, you sound like you're having a great day today, man. Thanks for making my day over the phone today. Before we get going on the phone talking about what you called in on, I just got to tell you, I appreciate the energy. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. If it's somebody in person and they, you could tell that, you know, a woman tried really hard on her nails and she's well, well put together. Can you say, hey, before we start today, I just want to tell you, you look beautiful. Like the, your nails look good. You look good, girl. Good for you. You out there killing it, man. Holy yeah. smokes. You know, if they're if they're a jacked up dude, they're like Joseph Anderson down here. Like, if I'm walking in to buy something from him or I'm, he's the salesperson, like he's my customer, I'd say, hey, Joseph, looks, looks like, like you worked out today, yourself, man. Yeah. Looks like you take good care of yourself. Does anybody you that's in the gym want to hear that? What are you training I'm like, for? what are you training for? Are you a professional athlete? You must be. Joseph, you know what my favorite thing in the gym to network with people is? And well, I thought y'all networking. He was trying to pull girls. Well, no, it still is. But like for, I taught y'all networking two weeks ago. If you guys didn't hear that one, I've already had people text me that they're making deals after deals after deals after deals after deals. So you can go back to Twin Tuesdays. It's called a track business. And you can see that one. But Joseph, I would go up to people in the gym. And number one, when I was single, the best way to hit on chicks in the gym, I'm just going to tell you guys, you know, don't get bit, don't kill the messenger girls don't want to get hit on in the gym girls nope. am i right nope y'all don't want to get y'all sweaty it's creepy you don't like it all the guys are staring at you i did it so i was smart so you know what i would do i'd walk by bianca and i'm like ah she's hot so i'd walk by and i'd say bianca what are you lifting for you're a professional athlete or is something i see you just you're like training, training really hard, hard. I just wanted to like you. i just want to tell you you're Good doing a great job but what are you training for yeah. she'd be like oh i'm oh just god. training for life i'm just trying to be the best myself you know and i'm like Sweet. i'm like oh my god hey high five kick, kick butt you and know then walk motivating off, me. and then as i'm doing my curls she's like i like that guy's energy i'm like i know you did and then I'm just like this. <laughs> so, and then I'm just saying, even in a professional network setting, I can walk by somebody that's in the gym that I know runs a business locally. And you see them and working I can like, hard. Hey, that's bro, important to I can walk by and I can say, hey, dude, dude, you freaking lifting, dude. Good job, bro. Sweet. Hey, I see you lifting over here. It's kind of pissing me off because it's making me want to lift harder, dude. Good job. And then as I'm passing by him again, see, that's reciprocity. Now he's like seeing you. He's like, oh, that's man, reciprocity. And then, and then I can say, hey, dude, I want to send you something. And then I send him my popple. I send him some value in advance. Like I've taught you guys on the last one and the next thing you know me and him are doing a little business you know because we we in there we in there together you know but see that that's the ability that's stuff that took us a long long time to learn how to do because we were scared we were nervous and once we figured out that 
it, it didn't matter. It was all made up fear in our heads. We finally started to become the people who we wanted to become. And those of you who are playing a little small with getting out there and chasing the pressure, just start doing a couple of these things. I want you to circle a couple of things right yeah. now. Bianca said she would have shut that down so quick. Yeah, you say you would. Yeah, but I, yeah, we, yeah we would have yeah, got, 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 got you. We would have got you. We would have got you. Yeah, that's got what you. they all say. Um, yeah, here. Yeah, uh, that's what I thought. Yeah, we'd have overcome. Uh -huh. She's like, you would have hit me oh, with an objection. No, I'm not it. training for anything. I'm, I'm so negative yeah. right now. Oh, oh I'm going to be like, she ain't with me anyway. She ain't poopy pants. Yeah, you're in peak state. Go away, Miss Poopy Pants. Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, go on ahead. You weren't hot anyways. Go on ahead, Miss Poopy Pants. Yeah, and then I would have been upset like, oh, she. No, like no, you wouldn't have. No, that's fine. some people. That's some people. That's an like, amateur. That amateur has been like, we should not give me any energy back. And then the twin said it would work. Yeah. Uh, no, no, single you, still. Hold on. Dustin Young, overcome the objection. And if you don't, move on, bro. There's plenty of prospects out there. No Keep big your deal. pipeline full with prospects. No big deal. No Come big on, deal. Dustin. Number six. Your consent consensus. Yeah, consensus. Now listen, if you if Check you out. if you know, like I know that 78% of my dealerships succeed at a higher rate with us Back when up. they come down to a seminar. If they just watch online, then they are likely to, you know, do it for a while. But when they come down and they're like in the culture, they're in the environment, they're likely to change. They're likly to change their health. Uh -huh. And they're 38% they're likely to enter our fitness program. Our fitness program is a 98% success rate right now, which is insane. So they're oftentimes, I know this. So when I'm talking to a prospect, I, I can say, hey, guys, listen. And I know that you like this online virtual stuff. I like it too. But you are after a result of changing X, Y, Z in your life. 78% of the people that come down here have given us a survey that says that they had an aha moment that changed their entire life. Now, do you want that aha moment? Because you're only 48% likely to do that and still succeed on a Zoom call like this. And they're like, I want to do this in person. I'm like, cool. It's a consensus. I know what, what happens. I know my business and I know my numbers. So yeah. And like I use, you could use it as like a, you know, third party clothes. You know, it's like, listen, man, look, you, you could use it like, like on a trade in or something. Right? Yeah. And yeah. You could use it on anything on a phone call. You could use it on some different trades, some different things that, you know, your business, there's so many different stats out there. Look, research shows that 75% of my customers, 75% of them did research for 10 to 12 hours. The fact that you came out on this car, I want to thank you. I know that you're here on the right vehicle. Sounds like authority. authority. Sound right. Like, like I already know that that's the truth because I've seen some of the studies. I know how to use that in normal language. That doesn't sound like it's bullshit. Right. Like, so also if I'm selling solar, I can say, look, 38% of my customers that typically do business with us lower their bill. They typically do this. This happens. This happens. Oh, I got two. I got two. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Customer, I know that you're wanting to sign up for solar. Let me just tell you, you said something about getting another quote. Did you know about 30% of the industry, once they agree to do the panel, some of the companies don't even put them on. And then they fight with the finance companies because they picked an amateur, not a pro. Would you prefer picking a pro where we can guarantee the install of this product? Bianca's doing life coaching. I'd say, hey, a lot of people sign up for multiple life coaching programs and you're objecting their price i get it things are expensive the life that you want is expensive so let me just ask you this if i could guarantee the results the guarantee the accountability with you and i could be on these calls with you every day versus a program that couldn't like wouldn't that be more the juice be worth the squeeze to enter a program where you're not going to pay for five programs this year and you can pay for one that's more expensive so listen you you value your money spend more of it to get more of the results like something like that but i can use some of those stats i can use some of those things as a closing tool to elevate myself. Or yeah, and I'll give you a stat. There was a hotel that did a, a study and this is how it works. It's all mental. Everything is science. A hotel did a survey and they put a little, they put a little, um, a little tracking card, a little tracking like, card. It was like a little, like a menu, like in the, in the menu. Right. And it just said, Hey, it's one of our businesses. And it said 75, we, we told them, listen, Hey, 75% of the people reuse their towels. 75% of the people in this hotel reuse their towels. What happened was 33% of the people who saw that ended up reusing their towels, okay? Then we told them, why don't you take it a step further? Why don't you say 75% of the people in this room use their reuse their towels? It went up another 20% because people started to see that there was some consensus, that there was a study, that there was- well, as soon as people stat. saw something, they're like, oh my God, okay, well, yeah. I'll just reuse it one or two times. It's a big expense to a hotel that we coach. It's a big expense to reuse the towels the whole time. But what they're not doing is reminding people that it is an expense and that for the environment, this would be better for them. So what they said was, hey, listen, 
75% of people in this exact room I reuse their towels to help the environment. If you could do the same, we'd truly appreciate it. Now they're at like a 94% rate and they've cut down that cost, which is massive across a corporation. So do you use things like this to move your sales forward? Do you understand that closing is the biggest tool? Do you understand right now with inside of this framework, like that you can use all of these things to elevate the prospect to close a deal, to get a check, to make a transaction go through. Nothing happens for a business unless a transaction goes through and a customer starts to move forward. Some of you, I know that you believe that, and we believe that mindset is important, belief is important. We believe all of those things are important, but closing is the most important producing thing in a result. business. Producing a result. Now, if you produce this result, will your belief get better? Yes. If you produce this result, will your mindset get better? Yes. Your vision will get better of seeing more money out there because you're starting to close more deals. In order to do that, you need to follow some of this structure. You need to implement that in your game so your belief will go up, the closing will go up, and you'll be living a fantastic life. Guys, we love you guys. Everybody who's on Twin Tuesday, take a picture. Eddie right said now. I reuse the towels and I steal them. Eddie, you piece you, of I knew that was you, Eddie. Eddie. I knew Eddie. it was you. Damn it, Eddie. Okay, we're putting that out there, Eddie. We're, yep. I'm posting that on Instagram. Guys, take a picture. Take a picture. Tag us. Let your friends know about Twin Tuesday. Go on ahead and a hey, couple sure. things. Couple on things. Facebook, Instagram, follow us on TikTok. Couple things. If you're in Utah or if you want to come to Utah, we have an event with David Goggins, Ed Milet, all of these guys. You can enter the room for 297 bucks. We're going to do a workout there. So we're going to do a workout with like a thousand people. So that'd be really cool. We're going to have some of them there. You could come for 297 bucks. You can go backstage for 2,900 bucks. I'm going to put my phone number here. We also have something with Tim Grover, Michael Jordan's coach. That's coming up. Uh, we're almost sold out of that event. That's here at the Lions Den. So that one's going to be even more special to me, kind of, because like to have that guy here um, and to be training with Michael Jordan's mentality coach and Kobe Bryant's mentality coach and Andy's mentality coach. He's who trains Andy. Like, you are going to see another level of sales. So I would love to see some of you here in the room with us. Chris Taylor will be in that room. Some more of you guys will be in those rooms. And if you need something, let us know. Also, runways. Runways are so important, guys. If you don't have a runway for November, like, hey, in November, I'm going to go to my first master closure. Center. I'm going to push hard up until I'm going to push hard up until then. I'm going to just get ready to go. I'm going to commit harder. Make a runway for yourself. You know, set it up. If you don't have the money, just call us and still commit to it and say, hey, I'm going to be there. Now I'm going to figure some of those things out or we'll do a payment plan. But commit to what the next 30 days, 60 days, and your 90 days of your personal development in your life looks like and start to take steps towards who that person is. The choices that you make today, the development that you do today will be what shows up on your paycheck six months from now. It will be who you are six months from now. Right. So for me, I'm going to go crazy as shit because every time I have, somehow I've just increased revenue and increased money thank you guys thank you guys we hope you had fun execute 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 let's go let's go baby go kick some doors in people let's go i don't know how to end it